The Straits Times has a new investigative series called Close Up. Its first episode, Insta Sex, has over 100,000 views on SG's Facebook and YouTube since it premiered last week. The episode tells the stories of three young girls who are publicly sharing their experiences about being preyed on by sexual predators online. Well, netizens on Instagram have commended the girls for speaking out. This user gave kudos to them for the courage to share their encounters as well as ST for shedding light on this issue. The sentiment was echoed by others who thanked ST for bringing it out in the open. Well, we're joined by the team who put this all together. Enterprise editor Lee Xue Ying is here in the studio. Now connecting virtually our education correspondent Amelia Ting and multimedia journalist Rachel Quack. Now before we talk about the Insta Sex uh, episode, sharing, tell us more about this new investigative series. Okay, um, so um, ST Close Up is um, a new investigative documentary series by The Straits Times um, in which we go deep into an issue and try to tell it in, we hope, uh, an interesting and compelling way. Um, it is a video format, so it's a very visual way of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, what underpins it is um, good old-fashioned journalism. Mm -hmm. You know, we've checked our facts, we get the full story, we get the different perspectives in. Um, so for Close Up, we look at um, a wide range of stories. We might be looking at um, stories that generally go under the radar, whether it's issues of people who do not usually get a lot of attention, or we might be looking at issues that people are talking about, mm -hmm. but we tell it in a different way. Um, so for Insta Sex, what we tr what we want to look at is the hypersexualized world of social media for Singapore's uh, young teens and children. Um, to be honest, this is really nothing new to many Singaporeans, um, probably under the age of 24. But what we want to do uh, this time is to and to do it differently is to really showcase the story of three girls who bravely stepped out mm. to tell us their stories and their experience of being preyed on by sexual predators online. Mm. Right. So we just had a teaser from Xie Ying. So let's bring in Amelia and Rachel to talk more about the making of this Insta Sex episode. Amelia, Rachel, what were you hoping to highlight in this episode? Yeah, so the first point that we thought um, was important to highlight was this um, this trend that, you know, social media is getting more and more prevalent among younger Singaporeans, which, um, as sharing said, is not entirely new. Um, but, you know, in recent years, we read now and then um, in the news of sexual assault cases, court cases, and sometimes uh, these cases could originate online. Um, it could be in the form of, like, stranger uh, DMs, direct messages, or sexual grooming. Mm -hmm. And... You know, looking at this, we wanted to bring, a, bring across a greater awareness that uh, some of this sexual harassment online can happen to anyone uh, who has a social media account, whether you, uh, you know, whether you list your account as private or public. And sometimes, um, you know, the cases can end up even in physical uh, assault. Um, yeah, and it's something that I also um, have been quite struck by as I speak to. Uh, teenagers and young girls, especially for um, stories on this topic, you know, that is while shocking um, to a lot of us as adults and to a lot of educators and parents, um, a lot of our young teens have come to accept or have mm. become slightly desensitized to uh, this sexualized culture that we see online. Um, they think that, you know, sexual messages, overtures, these sort of images that they get um, are very, in their own words, like normal, and 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 they become, in a way, numb or resigned to receiving such messages. And because of you know this um, attitude or this thinking, they don't want to make a big fuss out of uh, you know such behavior, and they think that you know it, it might be even prudish to to call such behavior out. And and in some in many cases, they actually don't talk to their parents about. Um, what they encounter online, what they see or what they even experience. Rachel, what about yourself? Uh, what were you hoping to highlight from uh, this episode? I think the one thing we got out of talking to these girls is that uh, social media is addictive. So it's very hard for, I would say, young generation to give up social media completely. So I think our general Asian parent response is to tell them to you know, uh, shut down your social media. But I don't think that's the right way to go. The biggest takeaway that I hope audiences, uh, especially parents, see is that not to ban your children, but 
to guide and to have conversations with them about maybe the disturbing things or even interesting things that they are exposed to online. Uh, but the one thing that uh, struck me while making this film is talking to men about toxic masculinity and how um, such cultural behavior is even easier to do it online because they are behind the screens, you know. So um, a lot of the guys, they talk about how, you know, actually growing up, they are clueless and they are confused on how to approach girls. So they turn to media and often it's advertisement, porn, and it's often um, they see girls in, you know, in a very different, in a very sexualized manner. So they're pretty mm. much acting out what they see in the mm. media. So a lot of them said it would be nice to have conversations with girls on how they can uh, interact with them better online and even offline. How did you go about uh, finding the profiles of these three young girls? And in doing so, what were the challenges involved? Was it like, you know, and how did you manage to get these teenagers to speak publicly about what happened? Or is it, a, and how did you also, I guess, prepare them for potential backlash after the episode aired? Actually, for the three girls, um, the, the conversation you, you saw on the video was not the first. Um, it was, you know, it was part of a longer process of getting to know the interviewees, getting them to open up and um, also checking in on them quite regularly to just, you know, have a chat. Um, and I think what was important also was to empathize with the experience. And, and, you know, when I meet them, it's not just to take down notes or to ask questions for as a reporter or your story um, and we know that we asked a lot of them um, given how young they are and you know they had to relive their uh, traumatic experiences they, and and it was also quite harrowing for for some of them to have to look through their uh, laptop hard drives and phone folders to mm. to retrieve images and screenshots of conversations and have to reread all those um, mm. because it was not nice at all and, and I think for that's why we were from the start honest with our motives for what you know this video project was all about. So sharing, what are the subjects will be tackled uh, in future episodes? Right. Um, the next episode will be uh, is called Migrant Burden, and it's actually about the lengths that migrant workers go to in order to secure a job here in Singapore, mm -hmm. and it's helmed by um, correspondent Yuan Sin, and it'll be landing in the next week or so. So please do look out for it. Well, Sharing, Amelia, Rachel, thanks so much for coming on the show to share more about this new close up series. You can watch the Insta Sex episode on the Straits Times' Facebook and YouTube channels.